I think viewers should attend Underneath the Freeways of Los Angeles because it gives them an opportunity to have a really um, engaged experience of history, uh, especially for Los Angeles residents, but really anywhere. Um, you're getting a, a kind of niche inside view of what it was like to be in this community at the time. And you're really, the way we've structured it, you're, you're really accepted as a member of that community, which I think um, allows for a different way of thinking about um, that history in particular. And it should be really fun. I'm Alana Dietz, Associate Artistic Director of the Echo Theater Company. And if you want to learn more about Underneath the Freeways of Los Angeles, please watch this video. So Underneath the Freeways was actually a commission. With COVID and everything being shut down, we talked a lot about what we wanted to do in this time. Um, and I initially had a lot of resistance to producing anything online. I, I just feel like it's not the theater experience that we're all used to. It's not something we're specialized in in any way. We didn't really have anybody on the staff who knows how to manipulate it in a way that I feel like could be effective. Um, but, you know, as as this has stretched on and on, we wanted to think about creative ways that we could still provide content for our audience. Um, and Chris came up with this idea, Chris Fields came up with this idea that he wanted to do a murder mystery. And so we started talking about who we thought would be right for that. and. Matthew Paul Olmos was a member of our lab a couple years ago, and we've always been really big fans of his writing, and um, we thought that his particular like style and tone would be right for that kind of project. So we approached him and commissioned him to write this piece, and we said early on that we really wanted it to be interactive. Um, that was kind of the most important thing, was that we didn't want people just sitting and watching a, another Zoom reading. Um, so that was how he approached it and, and that the way that that's evolved has has changed as we've gone and as we've experimented with actors and with actually having audience that we haven't had an actual audience yet we've had a sort of a test run where we had people come so that we could practice just moving them around zoom and see how that works um and yeah matthew i thought he came up with an amazing idea um he actually presented a number of ideas to us and they were all really exciting so we kind of went back to him and said well which one do you most want to write um, and he felt really strongly about this idea of writing something that was set in Boyle Heights in 1960 um, which is when the Los Angeles freeways were being expanded and the East LA interchange was being built and about 15,000 people were displaced out of the community as a result of that um, and we thought that was really exciting we love the idea of having this like a political backdrop to a murder mystery and seeing what came out of that so it'll be really interesting to see. We're really excited to have audience starting this week and um, see what comes out of it. The thing that excites me the most is that while the the play only has one result, really, um, the conversation can go any number of ways. So depending on who's in the audience, um, the what comes out of their experience and what they discuss and what direction uh, the show is led as it goes will really change depending on what the audience thinks and what they're interested in. So underneath the freeways, um, the first thing that happens is you meet a, a kind of a narrator character named Ellie, who is the guide for this process. So when you first come into the room, you, the audience is hidden and she sort of explains what's going to happen and tells you what you need to do and um, gives the overview of what's going to what's going down. Um, and then what happens is the audience gets split into breakout rooms, into groups, with one of the actors. And um, they've also received an, a number of materials ahead of time, that we call the onboarding materials, that sort of give them a sense of what's what this mystery is, what the murder is, uh, what the crime is that's occurred, um, and also what their role is. So the idea is that they're members of the community and they have an investment in figuring out exactly what happens. Um, and we also send them a, a, a document that we're calling our interrogation sheets, which gives just a little hint about each person that they're going to meet, each person of interest, and also has space for them to take notes and gives kind of uh, 
prompt questions about things that they might want to find out about from each actor. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty basic stuff like who, what, when, where, why. Um, uh, but then we also give little specifics about each character that they're going to meet uh, to help guide them. So then in the, each breakout room, they hear from each actor and they also are able to guide that conversation um, based on what they want to know. So the, the character might tell them one thing and then they look at their sheet and they see, oh yeah, I see that you have a son, you haven't mentioned him. Um, what was your son doing during this time? Uh, and then they they have a limited amount of time with each person, and uh, they travel. the The audience stays, but the actors travel through the room, so they so that the audience meets each character. Um, and then after they've met everybody and had a chance to question them, everybody comes back together in the main space. And then Ellie, the same the guy that they met at the beginning, uh, leads them through a conversation about what they learned and what they think might have happened. And then they have an opportunity to revisit a few of this, those same, the people that they've met. So they choose as an audience who they want to hear more from. Uh, and we hear, you know, we, and then we get a little more information from those people that they're most interested in. Um, and then it culminates in a reveal of what actually occurred. The director is Michael Alvarez, who was someone that we had hired at the Echo once before. He directed a public reading, um, and Chris just felt strongly that he'd be the right person for this. So we had a conversation with him. We sent him the script. He loved it, and he and Matthew really connected. Um, and so that's who's directing it. And he also has a, a strong background in immersive theater, which we thought would be really right for this. Um, it's not exactly an immersive piece. There is, because of the interactive qualities of it, um, he's had that experience of figuring out how to get the audience to engage and also to make sure that they're on board with, with what's happening and really clear about what their, where, what their role is in this world. Um, the cast is amazing. They're, it's a mix of Echo members, friends of the Echo, and then a couple people that we never met before. Um, that came through recommendations, a couple from Michael, the director, one from a company member that just happened to be, she just worked on a short film that she was in. Um, and yeah, they're all wonderful. It's a, it's a really great group and can't wait to see what they do. Honestly, I mostly just hope they have a good time. I, I think we're, we're all deprived of, of fun and pleasure right now. So I really would just want it to be a fun experience for people. Um, but I also hope that it, uh, it provokes some thought about displacement and community and also for those, especially for those that are actually from Los Angeles, how the city's structure itself has contributed to um, some of the disparity and inequality that we still see today. Um, there was a great article in the LA Times earlier this year that was... I think the headline was something like, if you want to talk about tearing down monuments of racism, let's tear down the Los Angeles freeways. Um, and that's kind of the premise of the show. Not to say that we're saying that we should tear down the freeways, um, but just that there is, there's more behind every decision that's been made in this city than maybe initially meets the eye. And there's uh, ripple effects that are that we're still seeing the results of t today as a result of that. So I hope that it'll provoke some thought about that and um, and you know, especially for those that live here, thinking about how their communities came to be the way that they are and um, how they might be different if certain things changed and you know what losses we've had as a result of these systemic structures that have been put in place. Um, particularly in you know it, with Boyle Heights specifically and this is something that's in the play it was a very integrated diverse community before the freeway was built and now it's lost a lot of that um, and I imagine that's probably true other places as well. I'm Alana Dietz I'm the Associate Artistic Director of the Echo Theatre Company and if you enjoyed this conversation about the Echo and underneath the freeways of Los Angeles please come to echotheatercompany.com and explore the many offerings we have there.